Shalom, I'm Dr. Marcus D. Johnson, and it's an honor and privilege to share with you during Westside Christian Academy's Spiritual Life Week 2022. I think you should make some noise on that. This week's theme is God is more than enough. We're going to look at the Bible's evidence or proof that this is a fact, not a fable, a fantasy, or fiction. Today, we're going to be looking at rocking your world. It comes from 1 Samuel 17 about a young man named David. The stories in the Bible are about real historical people and how they interacted with God. They're given from God's point of view. That's why I call them His stories. One of his stories talks about a time when there was a bully that came after the army of Israel. And they really talked bad about God and his people. And then God used a young man named David to turn things around. We're going to take a look at that. Let's pray first. Father in heaven, as we come to you now in the name of your son Jesus, we thank you for today. We thank you for this week that we're able to share and celebrate and really get excited about our spiritual lives. And we ask that you would speak to our heads, our hearts, and our hands in those things which are presented today. Through Jesus, your son, amen. Let's get into the lesson. Now, his story begins by showing us a young man called David. He was the baby boy of eight brothers. Three older brothers were in the Israeli army fighting a group of people called the Philistines. One day, David's father, whose name is Jesse, asked David to take some food to his brothers and check on them. When he got there, he saw King Saul and the Israelite army on one hill and a group called the Philistines on the other one. They were grilling each other. All of a sudden, a giant man named Goliath of Gath stepped up. He was about 10 feet tall. He was as tall as a basketball hoop. He had a bronze helmet and his armor weighed 126 pounds. The tip of his spear weighed 15 pounds. His shield bearer walked in front of him. Goliath made a challenge every day to the Israelis. He had been saying for 40 days, pick your best fighter to fight me. If he wins, the Philistines will become your slaves. But if I win, you will become our slaves and serve us. Give me a man to fight it out. The Israeli army looked at Goliath in fear. This man openly, defiantly, and just bullied them. Well, King Saul offered a huge reward. He said, anybody willing to fight Goliath could marry my daughter. There were no volunteers. David was asking, who in the world does Goliath think he is? This ungodly Philistine is making fun of the armies of God? You know what? I'll fight him. Well, David's willingness to fight Goliath reached King Saul, who asked to see him. David trusted God and told the king, I'll go fight this ungodly Philistine. King Saul answered, you can't go. You're too young and inexperienced. You're just a boy. And he's been fighting ever since he was a boy. Man, David said, King, I'm a shepherd and I take care of my daddy's sheep. If a lion or bear took a lamb, I'd chase it, knock it down, and get the lamb back safely. If it turned on me, I'd grab it by the throat and kill it. I'll do the same to Goliath. God saved me from the lion and the bear. He'll save me from this Philistine too. King Saul said, Okay, David. Go, and I hope God helps you. King Saul gave David his bronze helmet, his sword, and his armor. David tried to walk in it, but he couldn't move too easily. David told King Saul, I won't be able to use this stuff. I'm not used to it. So he took it off and returned it to him. David put his trust in God and went to go fight Goliath, the ten-foot guy. He took the sling he used to throw stones at wild animals. On the way, David passed by a brook of water. He stopped and selected five smooth stones, and he put four in his pack, and he put one in his sling. Goliath was still making fun of Israel and waiting to see if they had someone to fight with him. David started to move toward Goliath. Goliath shouted, Am I a dog that you come after me with a stick? And he put down David. 
Woo! Then he said, if you come over here, I'll, I'll kill you and feed you to the wild birds and animals. Well then, David shouted back, well, you want to fight me with a sword and a spear and a battle axe? Well, I'm going to fight you in the name of the Lord and his armies, who you're making fun of. Today, he'll hand you over to me. I'll kill you and cut your head off. Goliath started to move toward David. Then David began to swirl his sling round and round. It probably started to make that buzzing sound as he whipped it around faster and faster and faster and faster and faster. Then he released it. Bam! Down went Goliath. When the Philistines saw their champion was down, they said, we better run for our lives. The Israelis jumped up for joy and chased the Philistines back to their homeland. Wow. What is his story teaching us today? God showed his people this wasn't a fight between a slingshot and a sword, a shield, and some armor. No, it was a fight between who you're fighting against, what you're fighting with because the battle belongs to the Lord. It also shows us through David that God is able to bless you abundantly so that in all things at all times, having all that you need, you will abound in every good work. In the same way that God sent David to help King Saul and the army of Israel, he wants to use you as a member of his kingdom family, a saint. You don't become a kingdom family member just by praying a prayer. It can start that way. But saints work at learning, loving, and living out God's word by learning to hear his voice. Remember, saints are set apart for him. Believers, as believers, we trust and support him. And as disciples, we demonstrate our relationship daily. I want to take this time and let us conclude with prayer. Heavenly Father, again, we thank you for today's lesson and reminding us we have to not focus on what we have to work with, whether it's a, a, a difficult situation or a real bad situation, but who we're working with. You're able to take whatever we give you, whatever you put in our hands to use so that we can become victorious. Sometimes it's not just for us, but often for people that are around us. We want to work where you're working and join you in what you're doing. So I ask you to remember each person who's watching this and remind them, don't focus on what you have to work with, but on who you get to work with. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Until next time, Westside Christian Academy is Spiritual Life Week 2022, where God is more than enough. I'm Dr. Marcus D. Johnson. Shalom.